<coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, hello, this is working. Yeah. Um, can I have my slides? Maybe. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Um, before I start, I'm right now I'm mind blown because I just learned you had to do a presentation. I'm sure you sometimes had some problems with like resolutions, not picking up the resolutions. Uh, like this is all you have. And this a guy from here just teach me that if you press option and click here, you have all those resolutions <laughs> that you can pick from. It's amazing. So thanks. Anyway, <laughs> it's yeah, incredible. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, again 3GS uh, over the last kind of the, I've been working on that over the last five years. Um, in this month is going to be the fifth anniversary, and. I wanted to like kind of like run through a little bit how has it been over the last like how every every year the kind of things that we've been we've been working on. <coughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, like well, I actually cannot really see much, but like uh, how many of you know what the uh, O3GS, uh, what the O3GS or what the libraries? Like maybe fifty percent. Cool. So O3GS is a library, uh, JavaScript three D library is mainly focused. Uh, for real-time stuff, is like for solving, trying to like make real-time 3D uh, easy to do, which historically has always been very difficult to use, uh, to do. It's open source. Uh, <coughs> the, the website is 3 djsorg where I like collect some of the most um, interesting examples that I see like on Twitter usually, or like someone like, you know, news and stuff. Uh, it's use this page itself, it's like really pretty inspiring, I think, uh, to the kind of things that nowadays we can do on the web. Um, it's on GitHub, it's hosted on GitHub. Uh, we have had like so far 72 releases. Uh, we have like about 450 contributors. Uh, we have like 19,000 19, 19, stars on GitHub, which I'm still not sure what that means. And some people uh, have like spent the time of writing, writing like actual proper books and sell them on like, in, like you know. uh, so far we have seen like about five uh, like, you know, like a variety kind of like editorials. Um, Google has used it uh, for like doodles and like uh, promoting technologies like HTML5 and WebGL, which I have felt with. Uh, Mozilla has been using lately for promoting uh, WebVR, VR, which is like an API for uh, uh, doing the, uh, controlling the Oculus Rift, uh, you know, VR devices uh, from the web. Uh, Microsoft surprisingly has used it uh, for their uh, photosynth uh, application, which is like a, a way of taking pictures of, of like a scene and then like uh, automatically create, generates the scene or like puts the pictures in, in space. And Apple has used it for iOS, allegedly. I don't really, they haven't, they haven't told me, but I can see it on the license on the iOS um, uh, operating system. And they also used it uh, for the last page for the new MacBook page for some elements of it. And even Autodesk, more surprisingly, uh, use it for uh, the viewer online uh, for like, they have all those like model, um, model formats that they're trying to like preview online. So they're using 3GS as a base for the editor. They are adding stuff on top of it. Um, however, this is um, kind of difficult. Like whenever, whenever you're doing an open source library, it's difficult to really uh, know or like have a grasp of whether it's that people is using it or not because it's just a file that people don't know that they use in the website and you cannot really have a way of tracking it. And if you wanna have like a, you know, if you're curious to see if it's successful or not, it's, it's very difficult to, to know. Um, so something I've been using uh, to get an idea of how is it going is like uh, using uh, Google Trends. So if you search on Google Trends for the 3 uh, search um, keyword, uh, you get this graph, which kind of like shows that it's kind of like going setting up and it's kind of, uh, uh, it's good to see. Uh, but then you can compare it to, I was curious at some point, I was like, okay, I'm gonna compare it to Pervision 3D. Was Pervision 3D was like another API similar uh, for Flash back in the days, you know, like some years ago. Uh, and it's actually, it was, when I saw this, it was really interesting to see how, how quick uh, Pervision 3D was able to like reach that, you know, impact. Like it took three years, like probably like three, two, two times uh, the same amount of time to reach the same level. And that's probably because Flash was really like everywhere. Like in our case, like 3JS, it was using HTML5 or WebGL. So it was still a technology that were evolving. And then I was curious and I was like, compared to WebGL itself, and it's interesting to see that 3JS is kind of catching up slowly WebGL itself, which is 
what is supposed to be simplifying. And then you compare it with Unity 3D, and then you can see that there's a lot, a lot of work to do still. So uh, I'm going to start by going like four years before uh, I actually like uh, started the whole thing. Uh, before I used to be a designer, uh, just doing like Photoshop work. But I was I was always like uh, very curious. I always wanted to learn to program because I wanted to like build tools my, for myself. Or like I just find it like uh, inspiring. Or like um, I wanted to play with code a little bit. Or like learn to play with code. So about uh, in 2006, uh, I was doing some. I started doing some basic action script um, uh, graphics uh, experiments. I was mainly like looking for uh, people that looking for code on C that I will port to action script and try to make it work, but I was not really understanding what I was doing. Like, it was just code that I was porting, but without uh, understanding the math uh, behind it. Um, so I was playing a little bit with it, uh, with Astronaut Shift, until one day, like, a friend of mine sent me uh, FLA that had, when you execute it, it will have this thing. And <clears throat> this is basically, like, a very, very, very tiny, simplified um, 3D engine uh, just that only displays, like, eight dots and it kind of forms a cube. Like all of the, we are basically seeing a cube, but we are seeing the vertices of this cube. Um, so he sent me this, and I was I found it very exciting because it was uh, code that it was in a language that I was able to read, even if the math I still I wasn't still not understanding it. Um, so I started to study the code, and I realized that I could uh, connect those points uh, with lines. And then I, managed, I finally managed to have like something. I started. It was for the first time that I. I started to have some control of the code that I had. Uh, I still didn't understand like all those, what all those sinus and cosinus were doing, but I was able to like control how the whole thing was displaying without using like um, you know software, without using Photoshop or CD Max like with proper code. Um, so I had this and I was very excited. Then I was like, okay, I can I know how to draw lines. And I can also I also know how to draw uh, rectangles. So I connect I connected the, every vertex with a rectangle. And then I'll, I'll, I'll end up with this, which was, is just like a you know solid white cube. But obviously, you cannot really appreciate that it's a cube because it's all the same color. So the next step was to add different colors to each side. And then you end up with this, which at the beginning looks exciting, but then you start to see that something is wrong with it. And after spending some time like um, trying, uh, <coughs> you realize <laughs> you realize that uh, um, basically. What you're doing, what you're doing here, is like drawing every side um, uh, on each, like in different colors. So now I'm going to draw the back, and then I'm going to draw this side and this side, this side. So what you need to do is like everything, everything that you do in like 3D, you need to uh, real time 3D. You need to sort from, uh, especially in this one, you need to sort from back to front. So whenever you're going to draw those elements that you you know where they are, you you draw first like the back or the one that is far away, and then in order to the ones that is to in front of you, and then you end up with this result, which is what we were looking at first, what we were trying to do in the first place. Um, so, two, well, that's funny enough. That took like two years, uh, and then about that time, um, uh, this happened. <laughs> So, for those of you that don't know about this, um, Prevision 3D was a library for Action Script that basically they, they were doing they were doing exactly what I was starting to do, but they managed to have um, uh, textures in it. Like I still didn't know how to like have textures and uh, map a texture in a, in a 3D object. So they managed to do that, and they uh, when I saw this, I was like, okay, I'm gonna, this is uh, very difficult for me at this point. I'm just gonna start like. Uh, experimenting with uh, Prevision 3D instead. Uh, so I started doing like some simple things. Uh, like I started to see what were the, um, uh, the things that the library was able to do and then combine it with uh, my previous experience with uh, 3D Cinemax and doing other real-time um, uh, work that I was doing. So in this case, for instance, I was uh, trying to see uh, if, I was, if I was able to, like, you, could, you can bake the illumination in 3D Cinemax into a texture, so then you don't need the engine to have, illumin you don't, you don't need the engine to have lights. And you can take it the the, uh, the output. You can take it so people can uh, you can get like realistic shadows uh, out of that. And uh, you can see there is a lot of like blinking things. And it just uh, that was a limitation of the uh, technology at the time. And then I did uh, another simple experiment that was uh, 
playing with a uh, kind of trying to uh, emulating uh, depth of field. I was really porting techniques that I knew that I know from other people, like from like 10 years before. Uh, so for this one, for instance, what you do is like you have the same image uh, with uh, different levels of blur in the same in like one uh, long image. And then depending on how close of they far, or far they are, they use, you use one or the other. And then you can create this kind of like depth of field effect. Um, there was a black version of this that was very popular for like, like clients like Coca-Cola really wanted to have stuff like this uh, because it was kind of bubbles. Um, then there was, um, at the time everyone was doing uh, clocks. You know, if you're, doing, you're a creative programmer, you're supposed to do your own clock. So uh, my version was just with cubes and shadows. And I was curious to see like if I was able to like, I guess I was obsessed with shadows. Um, so yeah, I was trying to see if I could like, um, you know, like dynamic shadows because that's at the time is what every, all the people were trying to like um, um, work or they're, they're trying to like improve the library somehow like, oh, we cannot do shadows, so how do we do, you know, like trying to different tricks. So this was my approach for this one, just rendering from the top the same scene and then using that as a texture at the bottom and blurring it a little bit. Um, then um, I moved uh, a little bit into uh, modifying the geometry uh, procedurally. So this was like a, I'm, I'm not sure why I started with a, a planet, uh, but yeah, I was kind of trying to like apply like a pearly noise uh, distortion of, on all the vertices. Then this is, oops, I lost the focus. Then this is the same thing, uh, but with a reflection, which in this case the reflection is just using a simple image. It's all pre-baked kind of, it's just all fake. Uh, next one. And I was doing like a, some, I'm not gonna show those projects, but I was doing, at the time I was working on a uh, design agency or like a um, design production agency, uh, doing projects like, you know, normal websites for like, um, like Ticketmaster or like clients like this. Uh, that I was using all these um, techniques and all these uh, libraries, but, um, and I was reaching some limits of them. Like uh, I wanted to do some specific things, but I, and I realized that the, the design of the library was not, it could be improved. So then I went back uh, into my own engine, and I, this is, and I started working on my, on my own engine and see how it will. Um, it was difficult to modify the other ones, so it was easier to like start from scratch and see, uh, test myself if my ideas were good or not. So on this one, I was it was just a simple test to see how many uh, uh, sprites of how many particles I was able to like render at the same time with like some point light uh, illuminating them. Uh, Something that I always try to do, I used to do more before, is that um, every time I was trying to explore like a technique, at the same time I will also like um, find it interesting to uh, try to find something pretty on itself, like explore both sides, the, the design side of the visual aspect side, and also the technical side. Which usually like most people like doing like libraries, they focus on the technical side, doing something that is not that appealing. Um, then soon after a super five happened, and HTML5 is a very broad kind of term. So one of the things that HTML5 brought was like the canvas stack. So from, uh, from the first time on the HTML on JavaScript, we were able to um, create an image in the page and draw on it, uh, like procedurally. Like until, until then, you can only load images and display them. Maybe you can do something with SVG, I don't know. Um, but, and this is like, a simple code, or this is like when you look for tutorials, uh, like an example of how to draw a, a circle, you're gonna find this, and then the output is this image with the circle. So this is probably doesn't look very exciting, but then it just started to combine with other things. Uh, you get stuff like this, uh, which is uh, one of the first experiments that I did uh, using this uh, technology. Um, so in this case, I use uh, every circle is a different canvas that I'm generating by the time I'm clicking. And then I'm using a library that someone ported, uh, Box2D, the same library used for like uh, Angry Birds, uh, a physics library that someone ported to JavaScript. I'm just applying them, applying it to all the uh, elements on the screen. Um, a variation of this that some people, of this that some people might have seen is this, um, whoops, I'm gonna look. Wow. Well now all the elements are supposed to be falling and it's supposed to be very fun. So yeah, all the elements fall, and I don't know why. Maybe because I don't have internet. Anyway, um, 
another thing that the, uh, this uh, tag, the canvas tag, allows you to do is not only draw like vector uh, objects into the element, but you can also like go to the pixel level and draw the pixels yourself. So if you want to draw like one pixel in this position, you can use like like select like I want this amount of red and this amount of blue and yada yada. So with that, you can like I started like putting yet again like effects from like 10 or 15 years ago at the time um, to uh, HTML5 canvas. So this is a very like classic like water kind of simulation effect. Um, then there was another one which is like kind of like generating uh, fire, which you know basically you go through every pixel and like trying to like look at what's around you and kind of blur it and like just basically like apply everything and like divide it by three and then just move it up somehow. Um, but it's just like porting like and trying to like experiment a little bit with it. But what was nice is that at, the at this time I really understood what I was doing this time. It took four years. And same thing, this is like combining uh, both, like just drawing like vectors, circles, and then like applying a, a blur to the whole thing and like kind of like scaling, scaling it down. So it, it's funny the, the artifacts that it creates now, but uh, it kind of gives the impression that you have all those things approaching you, but there is the other way around, kind of. Um, what else? And, oh wow. <laughs> So another application uh, that at the time, like uh, like Canvas, didn't um, uh, only allow to like create uh, drawings uh, at low time. You can also like um, keep adding things to the Canvas. So this allows you to do like a drawing application. Uh, this might be a bit too. Um, let's see this one maybe. Yeah. So I started experimenting also with this. Um, some I, I wanted to do like a drawing application or a simple drawing application, uh, but like also experimented with some. Um, interesting brushes, so whenever you are drawing into this uh, canvas, it's looking at all the lines that you have drawn and connect them. So it creates this kind of like uh, shade kind of looking thing um, without you having to do anything. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much what all the experiments I was doing. I was trying to like kind of experiment, but like now finally really understanding what I was doing. So in 2010, at the same time I was like porting the, live, the engine that they had uh, in AstroScript, I was porting it to JavaScript. And in 2010, uh, at some point, at the Kunsai, coinciding with the uh, with the birth of GitHub, which was like a new platform for uh, uh, developing, uh, like for like hosting open source projects, but also it was very um, helpful. It was very it was very useful for like designs for really like getting for collaboration. So at the time, I was no one was really using, or not not that many people were using it yet, but I used. Everyone's using SVN, but at this time I'm like, you know, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna put the engine that I have and see if someone can like help with this or like someone can tell me what I'm doing wrong because I use the 3D engine, like I was, I was not really understanding what I was doing still. Um, so that was the first commit at the time. Um, 2010, it's actually April 24th. It was, it's we on this time zone. So. And the code looks something like this, which for the people, for the, People that have seen the, how the code looks nowadays, it looks kind of similar. It's only the main difference that doesn't have the three at the beginning. But I don't exactly remember why we started doing that. I think someone, I was like, peop, many people were, were giving opinions about like, you're supposed to do this and that, this is better because that way it doesn't collide with other things. Um, but yeah, most of the uh, code still like remains very similar to what it is now. So the, the ideas that they had, the, the structure they had still, still the same. Um, at the time, I didn't know, uh, but what I was building was, uh, he has a name and it's called a Syngraph. So you're basically uh, creating like tiny, like, you know, you can call it like a 3D studio or something or like a Maya, where you have a scene and you add cameras to the scene and you have lights and meshes and to the mesh you add like a geometry. You have the mesh con contains the geometry and material and the material has like textures, you know, for like different passes for like reflections or like the colors or whatever. Um, you can, and you can move those things around. Like the camera can be a child of the mesh, or like the camera can be a child of the light. If you move the, the light, the camera is gonna follow it, stuff like that. So this is kind of the, whenever you're gonna do any 3D uh, library for, or whenever you're gonna like code 3D row, like WebGL for instance, you don't have any of these. You had to like, you had to like do yourself the whole like sorting of all the elements and like making sure that if this is a child of this other object, that like you do it yourself and you have to do all the matrices and work yourself. Um, 
So at the time, because I was playing with Canvas, uh, I started doing the Canvas render, uh, which, for instance, this is the same code that we saw at the beginning uh, with, that will draw a circle. But what we're doing in this case is like we have all those particles, and at the time of rendering, I'm figuring out how big those particles are supposed to be in order to create the illusion of like 3D. Uh, but this is basically the same draw code, the same uh, code, like doing draw a circle here, draw a circle here, draw a circle here, like 60 times per second, basically. Um, then soon after, I added polygons to it, so then I could have like a simple like cube into it. And also at the same time I was working, I tried to work on the SVG render because at that time, uh, it, that same year, uh, iPad uh, was released, and iPad was able to like display all these um, HTML5 canvas, uh, but it was very slow. So I did, I tried like doing an SVG render, which will render this, it will render the same output, it will render this, uh, but using SVG instead. So what it's doing is deleting all the nodes in the SVG and like creating them for every triangle. So it's like going to Illustrator and drawing everything and then doing a new page and drawing everything. But uh, it was fast enough, but it has limitations that uh, you couldn't really handle like textures too much. So just at the same time, um, in 2007, 2010 still, um, with Google we uh, work on this project um, I used to uh, that we wanted to promote HTML5 uh, because at the time, like, there was a lot of like uh, questions whether, like, you know, why do we need HTML5 if we have Flash and what are the things that HTML5 can do? So we tried to do like a project that will show the integration that you can have, uh, or like how kind of demonstrate the kind of things that uh, HTML5 was able to do. So for doing that, we did this music video for the band uh, Get Fire, and 3JS, for instance, was used was used on the on some of the shots, like especially at the beginning, but uh, on the on the whole on the main page. Uh, but like on that corner, those birds were using uh, using 3JS to like fake some birds. Like there, there were actually only three polygons, but if you put them like far enough, they kind of get the impression that there are birds kind of like flying around. And there were some other shots in it, um, like when trees pop out in the. Um, uh, panorama view, you had to like play those trees that will kind of fake uh, with fake uh, 3D. But at that time, it was very handy to have like a library like that. But it was it was just in a very very um, everything else was very hacky and like draw canvas basically. Um, then again, at the same time, this same year, WebGL happened. Also happened, and WebGL um, it's a, an API that allows. Uh, JavaScript developers to use the graphics card on the, on the computer. So until now, we were all only able to use the CPU. So everything that was drawn was using the CPU, but we have this chip on the computer that is designed to do graphics. The problem with uh, WebGL is that in order to uh, be able to like draw a, like a simple cube on this cube, on simple cube on the screen, you had to like it's very verbose. You had to like create all the like input all the vertices and everything. So you do it by you know if you do it by hand, it's quite a lot of setup. And all this is just for like, you know, simple cube with no even camera movement or anything. So, um, thanks. Um, this mysterious guy called Alter Qualia came by and so what, but um, uh, I was working on this, the 3D library that I was, I was working on and he decided that he wanted to do, um, to support the kind of the definition of the scene that I was doing. And he wanted to do uh, the WebGL render for it, so he will translate what I was doing—the whole like new scene, a new cube, and yada yada—and he will render the same thing as the canvas was uh, outputting. So he spent like quite a, a lot of uh, months working on WebGL on the WebGL render. So at, at the beginning, he was just trying to match the output of canvas render. So one of the first things that he did was this one, where he will uh, load the OBJ, OBJ file, convert it to our own format, and we, at this time, like he even add like lights and stuff. And on the first, on the first examples that he was using, like he will have like um, two, so you will be able to like jump to the uh, canvas render, so you can see it's much slower, uh, but it's still the same. It's the same output, you know, apart from the guy being in black, that is a little bit more technical stuff. Um, but the output is it was the same. Uh, then he continued, like once he had that, he, he started adding things that the library itself didn't have, like for instance, like he started adding like reflections, 
which is just like a reflection of a spe specific um, um, texture map, a cube map. Then he will add um, uh, refractions, which is the same thing, but like math-wise, it's just like inverting the where the color, where you're getting the color from. But it gives the, the illusion of, of refraction. Um, and because all the uh, experiments that we were doing were a little bit too abstract, um, he started to do like he tried to do like uh, more demos that were a little bit more easy for people to see the use of it. Like if you see something like this, even if it's a floating car, you, you can see a better use than not like those floating um, marbles refracting stuff. So so for here he used that like uh, being able to have like different colors and different cars and like kind of to see how the whole thing will fit together in a, in more, in a more uh, applicable way. So you, if, you know, in case people wanted to do like more real applications with it. Um, so the second year, um, by the time that he was well helping on all that, um, with, with Google again, we tried to do another um, project for like um, showcase, showcasing or promoting WebGL. So we did the same thing, uh, a music video, online music video, but um, this time a little bit more like sweet intensive. And this project um, helped a lot for um, adding many, many features to the library itself. We decided to use the Suggest to kind of build this. Um, but uh, for this this project, like we had to uh, like, um, for instance, code for uh, animating the animals that we're gonna see right about now. So some parts of the music video were interactive, where you could like, move the camera around. And in order to do like all those anim uh, moving anima uh, animals, like some animals will like also morph in between animals, like from one bird to like a, not a cow, like other different kinds of birds. Um, we had to add like many features to the library that um, we wouldn't have done if it wasn't because of this project. And at the same time, we had to do many things in a rush. So some some parts of it were a little bit messy. Um, but this this project was like um, pretty. Um, at the time, in 2011, I think it was pretty interesting. Like, it kind of set up the bar a little bit of how, you know, this is a web. Like, this is how webs can be nowadays. And it also helped uh, for the library, and at the same time, we made everything open source to so people could, like, see, like, how they can do these kind of things. Which, at the, and at the time, like, you know, if you go to FWA or some project like this, at some website like this, you can see, like, many interesting projects, but you cannot. You cannot see the code of those. Like no one will like share the code of those websites. But we had the chance to like, oh, here's how it works. This is the code. Like you can, you know, go play with it. So that was um, quite an adventure. But then we continue doing um, um, demos uh, for the library. We can, we still we had done like a, you know the end. It was only like a flat shading. It was not technically too advanced. But the the you know. What you can do with the GPU is much more than not just that. Uh, so the guy, like, we, we continue like adding things to the. Um, I don't know if this is gonna work. Nope. We continue adding more things and more examples to the library to kind of show the kind of things that we can that the, with the GPU we can do nowadays. So in this case, we were exploring a little bit like post processing um, into the scene. So it's it's actually faked. Faked is not really by depth. It's really like 2D, but it gives like a good impression. Or like it, gets, it kind of works. Um, what else? Uh, we started playing a little bit with um, what's called normal mapping, which is basically a way of like adding, even if your geometry doesn't have uh, a lot of detail, you can fake detail with the texture. So you want to add bumps into it. Uh, you have a, like different levels of different textures that you can apply, and then you can fake, like you know, like the shine, like the shine of the face, just with the texture. Like there's no. If you saw the problem, yeah. Um, there, there is not enough detail on the geometry to simulate that. Um, so in the third year on development, uh, by this time people were starting to be very annoyed with the situation with the documentation, because to the point that people would say stuff like this, which you know, if you're doing an open source free project, is not a nice thing to hear. <coughs> um, and we have actually tried to like many types of uh, ways of doing the documentation. Like there are ways of like adding <coughs> comments on top of the of the functions that you're doing that that will uh, auto generate the documentation. But I didn't like that because that then adds a lot of uh, code 
a lot of the things into your um, into your your code, so it's hard to read. And then there were like other systems that they have their own language and stuff. And in the end, I decided to just do a simple HTML page with like an iframe, on, like a frame on the side that loads pages. And that's probably that probably may sound insane uh, because whenever you're modifying something, you had to go to the document document page and modify that too. But <clears throat> considering the fact that this is open source and there's many people working on this, uh, it's not that hard. Like, like there's a, a um, you know, <clears throat> if it does for 100 people that have helped, like they were modifying one page, um, it will take not long. It will, it will take maybe one day to have everything in sync. Um, so people have been helping a lot with this, and now nowadays it's, uh, it's a pretty good, um, is it in, it's pretty much in sync with with the code itself, and <clears throat> we we have been adding like examples on top of some pages that are. It's kind of improving the kind of level the documentation that people usually do on projects. Um, also, <clears throat> that year, I people were also starting to ask that they wanted to have like a, if, if there was a logo for the page because they wanted to add the logo on their project. Um, so like you know using I don't know HTML5 and it's using 3JS or whatever, but there was no logo for it. So I run an experiment and I put on Twitter. Uh, I tried to see if I was able to apply the same open source I, um, ideas to a logo. So on Twitter, I was like, "Oh, does anyone have any ideas for a logo? Like, can you like for a logo of three JS? Can you please send, and we can like work on this together?" And that was not a very good idea because whenever you do that, something like that with code is is fine because you can look at the code and if it works, it works. It, it's good. But a logo is someone designs a logo and it shows you like here. I just did this key up in I don't know. Paint. This is the logo. How do you tell them that that's not a good logo? <coughs> and you know, without hurting feelings, of, you know. So, because in the past I was more like a designer, and I and I had done some logo design myself. Um, I mean, if that was not the best of the ideas, and some people I got pretty sad. <laughs> uh, I had to decide and be like, no, no, I, I need to do one myself, and I need to be like, you know. Usually you can work on things together, but in this case I had to be the one saying like this is the logo, and it's been two years and still haven't used it. Um, it's, it takes a while to date the page. Um, that same year, uh, there was this video on YouTube from this company in San Francisco that um, they were trying to like they were pro proclaiming that they have s uh, solved the problem of HTML5 performance. And then you show this video, and they were saying, like, you know, we have this engine, this is not WebGL, this is not Canvas, yada, yada. And I didn't, really didn't look too much into it. But then people started, like, annoying me with it, like, pestering me with it, and saying, like, oh, what do you think they're using? I don't know. Um, maybe they're using this, and maybe this, this and that. I don't know. But, like, it got to a point, like, at least 10 people, like, ping me with it. So, like, okay, I'm gonna look at it and see how it can be done. And out of this video, I started to realize that maybe they were using CSS 3D because it was only things. So CSS 3D is like <laughs> is like CSS on HTML, but you can apply uh, 3D positions to it. So the, the browser is going to do the 3D for you, but you cannot really have like um, a 3D model in this. So I spent a while uh, trying to like replicate what they had, and even with like the design and everything, and like spent like um, I don't know maybe it was a day on it, and oops. And I had this thing, kind of, yeah, it was funny because some of the things that I did here, then they applied themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so they probably saw it. Um, but what was annoying of the whole thing was that um, they, you know, it's, it's, a, it's like a you know, San Francisco company, like trying to build, well, only 10 minutes, um, trying to build um, like a business and they're like creating all this smoke kind of uh, smoke into the whole technology and not trying to be very descriptive because that way they're going to pay you more, yada, yada. So they actually like got a few million investment only with that video, but then I just kind of like saw this, like, oh, it's actually not that, you know, you're not really solving that much. <laughs> um, anyway, so out of doing this, I realized that probably was handy to have something like a CSS3 render, which I still have the same definition scene, and then it just outputs uh, 3D deep elements. And and also I did <laughs> uh, kind of parody of the same thing, which I had the same thing, and you know, it's just CSS3D, it's, really, it's not, you know, you don't have anything special. 
It took a while to find the music. Uh, <coughs> then, because it was open source, then some some guys just like even like combined WebGL with CSS 3D and did like craziness that like this that I still don't see how it works. And I think the original company is still trying to figure out how to do this. <laughs> but they have a lot of money. Um, okay, so your fourth. Um, this is um, I come from this world called the demo scene. Uh, where people is all the time trying to push what the computer can do. Um, so you have a graphics card going to try to do the, the most amazing graphics with it in real time. So this is actually a demo that was released one week before we were releasing, uh, we were doing ROM. So it was a bit disappointing, like, oh, we have this, this is amazing. And then I saw this, like, well, maybe it's not that great, but still. So, I'm not going to show the whole thing, but like from this one, they have uh, all those yeah. particles yeah. Um, in real time, and they have a really good control of them. But the, yeah, like very crazy, they have like I think something like three million particles running in real time, and like putting all the shapes and all the time and like as well. Especially the last part of the video. And I, the thing is, all those guys are still using the same GPU that every that we are controlling from WebGL. So what they're doing, we should be able to do from the website. So I spent a while, like, um, it took I guess two years. I started to understand a little bit more how OpenGL was working, how WebGL was working, and the whole like, thing of like what's called GPGPU, which is basically um, doing all the particle simulation on the GPU itself. You're not computing all the particles in the CPU. So for doing that, you had to create a texture and you deal with like, like you, you have to think about like going to Photoshop and started starting like uh, drawing the position, encoding the position of every particle in, in the first pixel and then the second pixel with another position. And the red is like the X and the Y is the, the uh, green and all that. And then you modify all that with colors on the GPU. It's not very, it's not the right way of using it, but it runs very fast. So at that time I, at some point I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to like see how they're doing that. So I modified the text for this. Um, so I, I got to have something that like this is not as good as the demo itself, but uh, this allowed me to like um, understand a little bit what they were doing. And I, it was um, really like really see all the techniques and I, I was able to like play a little bit with this. Um, and also at the, same, at the same year, like I got invited to do an experiment for uh, this website uh, project called uh, Christmas Experiments. Uh, where I try to explore a little bit more like uh, particles and how to, the things that you could use. Uh, like, so I did this little uh, ambiental demo, like just playing with this and like exploring a little bit. Uh, um, it's really not really doing anything fancy because it's just the same sinus formula and kind of like whenever they leave first for like maybe a second, they, I guess longer. Um, four seconds they spawn again, but they are just following kind of the same path, and maybe it's like you're moving the sinus and cosinus distor distortion to the whole space, but just playing with this. Um, um, the problem with all this was that um, this was all very fancy and uh, fun to play with, but this is all like, this, this is not very accessible. This is all share the code that no one, like, that I wish, uh, you know, I had this, but this was not as good, as beautiful as the demo that I was trying to replicate, the demo I was trying to, like, emulate. Um, by the way, you have the code there, you can um, play with it if you want. Like, you have a lot of code on my GitHub. Um, so, at the time, I started to, like, be like, okay, um, this is all very fun, but we don't, um, we don't have um, uh, any, uh, it's not easy for, like, develop for designers to play with all this. Like, it's very easy for developers to play, but, we are like leaving the designers on the side. So I started to play with this. I started to do this editor to try to compensate a little bit of that. You cannot do particles with it yet because it's a very difficult, the particles side is a little kind of difficult to um, abstract. But like this is what you will think more like as a, um, you know, tiny, like, um, what I'm trying to say here, like this, a tiny um, Unity 3D kind of. Um, where you can like preview how the whole thing is going to be. So what you, this is a normal website. You can go to the 3 3 
a slash editor and you have this and you can like kind of preview how the whole scene is going to look like. You can load your models here and then you can export uh, the scene so your programmer can like do the interaction inside of it. Uh, something I've been doing, I don't know if it's here, yeah. Something I've been doing recently uh, to it, it's adding a script suite. And I'm going to be the same one. So you can add some basic scripting like, like on the old days of Flash. So, so you can like, do like simple things like this and you can have like some methods like mouse, mouse down and mouse up and things like that to like start to like uh, control or like start to add like, you know, you don't have to code everything. If you want to code, you don't have to code everything from scratch but you can add scripts into objects and play a little bit with it. So there are like some examples here like a simple arcanoid what you can see, you know, it's all this basic thing is, or this, this, you can find all the code here, which is pretty simple when you look at it when we study it. And, but yeah, this is, this editor is something I've been working for a while. Um, it's like a, like a, now it's like a brother of the library itself. It's good for like visualizing the library itself and like make sure that everything makes sense uh, in a, also in a visual way. Uh, but it hope, hopefully like it's, it's, it's also gonna allow designers to play and like to join join the party, I guess. Um, yeah, I'd also I did, um, <coughs> I started the editor at the beginning because I was working on this game um, and I needed to have um, like an editor for it to like build the levels. So you can also use the editor and fork the editor for your, whatever you're doing. Like if you're like, if you're doing, um, for instance, a game, you can just adapt it and like, and do whatever you want with it. It's uh, just the base, uh, base editor which I actually found out that Autodesk is also doing that. So the last year, over the last year I've been like, um, one of the main things I've been working on has been, <coughs> been like solving this geometry and buffer geometry issue, which the problem was that when I started doing the library, when I started doing the library, um, WebGL didn't exist yet. So my definition of a geometry didn't apply very well to what WebGL expects. So there is a lot of code internally that needs to be converted from one to the other one, and it's a lot of, and Alter Quality did a good job of like mimicking everything, so it looks good. But now it's all very difficult to like clean it up and difficult to, uh, to make it as fast as it can be, or like make it all clean and maintainable. Uh, so that took quite a while. It's difficult, it's hard because it's a thing that I do that I cannot really show to anyone because it's all spending time fixing things and still the same output, but you know. Uh, also that the same year like Google Cardboard happened and with that um, for me it was very easy to like add things to the library so like if people want to play with um, Cardboard they can create a scene and they just only have to add this um, stereo effect and device orientation controls and that way you can use the same scene that you have for like um, your website you can use it for like Cardboard. Um, same thing with a web VR. Um, they're still working on that. You, there is no browser, there is no stable browser that supports this. You have to don't know like Chrome Canary or something, or like Firefox Nightly. Uh, but like, if you want to play with Oculus Rift uh, using JavaScript um, and you're using 3GS, you only have to add that to your code, and it just um, this, that's the only thing you have to do. Um, and for a final thing, uh, I'm still. As I was saying, I always use the demo scene as a reference of the kind of thing that they can do. So this is an example of the, uh, something that they did last week, for instance. Let's see. A friend of mine, like Spite, has actually managed to do a good progress with this. Like, he's running all those things very realistically, but um, but it's not part of the library itself. You had to you had to code it yourself. And and this, I don't know if Jim Monk is here, but like he was showing all the um, 
um, um, laser work that he's doing. So this is something that uh, Tom Pony will be nice if we can also like bring to the web somehow. <laughs> something like this. Uh, I'm also working on some uh, timeline editor for that, like doing, helping on s stuff like this, but um, that will be, I'll leave that for another day. Uh, that's about it, thanks. <laughs> if anyone have any question, I think we are out of time, but, oh, there's one question there. You you have to start from in the editor, yeah. I cannot see much. More questions? No? Well you find me. Just feel free to ping me anytime. Thanks.